Hey everyone, how's it going? It is either way, Randy Chavez coming at you today with a VV Omi update video. If you guys are new, welcome for not welcome back. I love y'all. Everyone say hello to Dashi. Hello, Dashi. Commenting, liking, and subscribing is a free way to help support the channel. Non free ways are Patreon, especially that super thanks button down below. And uh, become a member, there's lots of perks. Also, wraithx.eth domain name. So, we have a couple things to go over. Omi was doing kind of okay the last 24 hours, except for the last hour and a half, down about 1.7% now on the day at 00061. $744,000 in trading volume over the last 24 hours. Uh, my new whale has reached slightly over 20 million Omi now. Um, we'll be getting him an additional 1 to 2 million Omi each week. Uh, he's gotten about, on average, 2 million Omi a week. I don't know how much he wants to get. I want him to get him like 50, I'm gonna get him like 100. Uh, we'll, we'll, see where that, we'll see where that goes. We have a couple of announcements here. Um, we'll start with Disney. Disney, you know, an article came out and said, hey, they lost about a billion dollars over the last you know, year with movies. It's like movies that cost a lot to make. I think the most significant one was Elemental, uh, which I think they did pretty well on VV. I think they made like 30 something thousand dollars on there, just in primary sales, not including secondary market. And we'll get more on that. What is that? We'll get... <laughs> <laughs> These damn kids. Uh, we'll, we'll get more on that in a minute. Um, but they have been filing a lot of patents uh, as of late. I've gone over a few of them. We'll go over another one right now. This one comes from Aeronaut over on Twitter saying, Disney is about to let celebrities sign your NFT. Published on 6 April 2023. Explains the coordination and management of digital asset endorsements. So basically what's going to happen is you publish a public key, wherever that is, you link that key to a digital wallet and social media profile. This should be pretty easy to do because now, uh, right now you have it where you have a MetaMask, you can connect that uh, to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and you can put your PFP on there, whatever it is, whether it's a fiche, whether it's uh, any other project. I think Rocket Blockchain has a thing called Boners now. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a charity project. A lot of it goes to charity. Um, it's really cool. Anyway. After that, you have a mint signed NFT edition with signature from private key. Uh, and then you create and issue NFTs with a GPG signature. And then after that, you go and you post NFTs for sale. And it says the transaction can be mediated via the platform. What platform are they going to say? Like, is Disney going to come out with their own platform? Or is it going to be, oh, hey, guess what? I'm going to, uh, we're going to do this on Vivi. Vivi has the existing infrastructure. The only other IP that they have elsewhere outside of Vivi is Cryptoys. They don't even have a marketplace yet. I, I don't think they would test it out with Cryptoys. I think they would um, like to do it on a place where we test all the time, which is VV. Why is this significant? How many people are gonna want signatures? What is that gonna do to the value of these NFTs? Okay, there's a lot of loaded questions here. Uh, I remember a few years ago, me and my friend Joe, we I was gonna go to some Pokemon convention and Mitsuhiro Arito was going to be there. We're going to get our Charizard signed by him. He wasn't going to go because, again, to go, you need to go spend a couple hundred dollars on air, airfare, a couple hundred dollars on a hotel, you need food. Like, it costs several hundred dollars, not a thousand dollars, not including the time you take off work where you're not making money in order to go do this. Uh, and there was no need for both of us to go, so I was just going to go. This is right around Rona, so it wound up not happening. But, you know, that that was a lot. And and not only that, you have to stand in line all day. It's, it's, it's just... Uh, not 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 too fun of a time. You know, there's other things that you'd rather do, but you do that because when Mitsuhiro Arita signs something, usually whatever he signs doubles in value. If you have something that's worth a thousand dollars, it'll be two thousand. If you have something that's five thousand, it'll be ten thousand. So it would have made sense in order for us to go and do that. Now, what does that have to do with this? Okay, well, if you have digital signatures, like let's say you have, you know, this Woody, right? Uh, this Woody, that's that's Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. If Tom Hanks has a wallet, like in, in order to sign this platinum moment Woody, I, I mean, in general, if you get something from Disney and you want to have him sign it, you have to go to wherever he is. He's going to charge a lot. There's going to be a mass rush of people. I, I don't think Tom Hanks is going to have any type of control of his wallet. I think one's just going to be set up for him. Oh, hey, you send it here in the smart contracts. It's signed. It's sent back. He doesn't have to do anything. Costs you a little bit of money, but that's it. It costs you about, maybe, whatever it is in gas. You go and you do that, you don't have to do any traveling, you don't have to do airfare, you're saving hundreds of dollars by doing that. You know, if you're worried about getting sick, you don't have to be in those lines, worried about crowded places, you don't have to worry about that. This is very, very disruptive. And that's just one particular thing. And a lot of other people that have theirs, that have signatures on it, a lot of times, 
Like, again, Mitsuhiro Rita, he'll sign anything that moves. Put something in front of him, he'll sign it. Ken Sugimori, on the other hand, one of the other most notable artists in Pokemon, has in the contracts where he doesn't have... He gives out so few signatures, whatever you give him to sign, add a zero onto it. So I think this is going to prevent Tom Hanks or anyone you know that you want to sign your NFT, whether it's the artist, the voice actor, whatever. It's going to prevent them from super diluting their signature, super watering it down, because you only have like whoever plays the voice actor for Miguel from Coco. Well, he can only sign 5,010 of these things because there's only 5,010 of them. He's not going to go sit there and sign 100,000 things. So I think that's really interesting. How much is that going to affect the NFT price? I don't know. I would say depends on how many people sign, depends on how many people value it. Some people, they don't like their card being signed. Some people, they like their stuff being pure and untouched. I could, I could imagine a decent amount of the same with this. So there's going to be a market for both. Uh, and on top of that, you have, I mean, you're going to have people that sign more than one thing. Oh, hey, here's a poster from, you know, Finding Nemo or a poster from Cars. You want Larry the Cable Guy. You want the signatures from all of them on there uh, because you, you want everyone to sign your poster. So I, I think if you go and you do something like that, there's going to be a lot of niche markets rising. Uh, how much of that is going to translate into extra dollars to go to sell? Again, I, I don't know. Um, because it's going to be easier to get people to sign things, I don't expect the signature to carry as much weight digitally as opposed to, you know, non-digitally, unless they go and they have events where, oh, hey, you know, put a QR code here, whatever it is. We're not 100% sure how they're going to do it, but because this cuts down on forgery, there won't be any fakes. I mean, people, I, they can try, but there won't be any fakes to this. Aronaut goes on and says, existing approach to applying a physical or digital endorsement to an item or digital asset are inconvenient in that the existing approaches are manually demanding, difficult to authenticate, or both. The digital asset endorsement coordination and management solution disclosed in the present application utilizes verified cryptocurrency wallets and introduces a novel and inventive automated process for digital asset transfer. Um, I think this is another way to, where they're going to bring back transfers. Oh, hey, let me transfer this to you so you can sign it. And maybe you have it in the smart contracts most of the time that, you know, it gets sent back to you. But I would say that if you go and you take a look at, if you go and you take a look at, go in the smart contracts, can you choose how long they have to give it back to you? Oh, hey, I'm going to give this person to sign it, but I'm going to put in smart contracts. He doesn't have to give it back for 10 years or whatever. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's a way around getting through the transfers because right now you can't, you can't do it. Vivi has a... So Silicon Secure, um, God rest everyone say comment down below, we love you Silicon. He had posted yesterday that he has stage four kidney cancer and he does seem to be in good spirits. Like he's like, hey, I'm fighting this. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna beat it. And that's half the battle right there. Um, but if he wanted to go and transfer something to his kids, he has to put that in his will. He has to put that in, in, in his living will because he can't, VV cannot go and transfer stuff for you because, again, all of these things are considered alternative assets. They are something that, like a car, like a house, it does have to be done legally. Can't can't just transfer stuff all willy nilly. Uh, but but that's one of the ways we might be able to get around that. I'm going to transfer this to you so you can sign it, and then, you know, just not give it back. Speaking of silicone, there was a space that happened yesterday. Uh, he said thank you to everyone that joined the space. It was truly amazing and transformative. It's clear everyone has had a battle in their lives, one way or another, with cancer. Together as a group, we will start the Silicon Secure Foundation. This will be a vehicle for giving back to our worldwide community. More to be announced soon. Really interested to see what he has planned. In other news, we had a successful drop yesterday, having about a quarter million dollars in sales uh, over on the primary market, not including the secondary. You have some people that say, oh, this waitlist is crap. That's People that are saying that just haven't gotten the waitlist uh verification yet or not the verification they just haven't been selected for any of the past few ones you're gonna have that it is the luck of the draw but i will tell you why that's a good thing went over this in a little bit of the live stream last night if there are so many people that want these items on vivi that means that it's good a lot of things are selling out it means that there's a lot of demand for these items i would be very happy if i never got selected for a wait list again because that means vivi selling out that means they're consistently making money you have a bunch of these people that are very much complainers, that are whiners, they want something for nothing, and you know they're looking at it one way. Well, I'm telling you, the data that is being presented is very bullish. 
if you do not get any of these items, you're not on this wait list, it's because there are so many other people that want to do it. Again, be, what do you want? What do you want to happen to get to get selected every time? I mean, yeah, that'd be fun. But again, I'd be very happy if I never got selected for a waitlist again, because that just means that Vivi's making money hand over fist. They could afford to get new licensors. They could afford to hire new people. Maybe maybe get some exchanges for Omi. I'm hoping, right? Right. But there were some complaints about the particular drop size for Miguel, and I think I know the reason why they did this, but. Um, people were saying, hey, Miguel would have been much better if he had, if he, he would have done much better if he would have been a lower price point or if he would have had a uh, lower mintage. And I agree, he would have made more money on the primary in the short term if he was lower mint or if he would have had, uh, you know, a lower price point at 20 or $30 like people were suggesting. Be advised that this is not a, this is not a short term thing. Like David and Dan are not making these just to see how much they can make in one in one day. I mean, it's it's fun to go and say, "Oh, hey, look at you guys! You made two hundred grand in fifteen minutes," and then you know more throughout the day, not including the secondary sales. Yes, that's fun. But the real money maker on this is is the secondary market. The real money maker on this is being able to buy and sell these things for years. So if you price something at thirty dollars, twenty dollars, whatever it is. The secondary market, they're probably going to sell around that, that price point, maybe even lower. I don't think there's been any Miguel that sold below $45. I think it's a $50, uh, $50 floor right now. Uh, and even if it does go down to 40 whatever it goes down to, it's uh, you're still getting more on that secondary than you would be if it was priced cheaper. And again, this might sound like a minuscule difference right now, but over the course of 20, 30 years, that's what you... That's what they're doing. Again, I'm just assuming here. That's just something that seems to make a lot of sense. If you want to ask David or Dan about that directly, by all means, go and ask them about it. Uh, but at that point, you have to start looking at the long game. And the long game is much more lucrative. Again, you have to think that way, though. We have Colonel Stats, the man who has 10,000 comics. Says, I wish we had priority queue for collectors. Why do we continue to reward flippers and people who do not buy drops? The biggest spenders and longest holders are the ones responsible for building this platform. Don't forget that. Let's go, Vivi. Looking forward to rewarding the collectors at heart, not the flippers at heart. Though, I understand this. Again, he's probably someone that just didn't get selected for the waitlist, but uh, that's what MCP is for. That's what OUP is for, to either give you more waitlist tickets or in order to give you more MCP points. I cannot wait for OMI staking. I am. It will happen, or at least part of it will start to roll out in Q3. When? I don't know. They haven't given us exact dates yet. They did give us a couple of updates yesterday, which will go over right now. But first... Vivi's new Spotlight Collector of the Week is Sleepin' Comics, and his Collector Insight is we're just getting started. His Vivi birthday is 1 September 2021. His first collectible was The Amazing Spider-Man number 1. His most prized collectible is Spider-Man Miles Morales animated, so we got that secret rare. His most sentimental one is Ultimate Fallout number 4 secret rare. You can tell he likes Spider-Man. Favorite movie, blah, blah, blah. Favorite movie is Avengers 2012. Oh, that was so good when that came out. Mm. Oh my god, I watched that trailer so many times. Drop wish list is Iron Man and Hulkbuster. I, I, I want that as well. Anyway, Vivi goes and says, Introducing our new collector spotlight, the man, the myth, the legend, Sleeping Comics, an ultimate guru of comic books. He holds the expertise to guide you through the world of superheroes and digital comic NFTs. Love him. Speaking of loving things, you have, uh, you have Nick Caffey over on Twitter saying, This number 41, the first public mint, is coming home with me. You're coming home with me. Comment down below if you've seen those TikToks. And, uh... He paid a cool thousand dollars for the number forty-one Nemo, and I think that's uh, I think that's fair. I think that's a good one. Um, anyway, onto these updates that I promised you. BB says while we work to revamp the recorded video format, here's a quick community update for June 2023. App updates: We continue to iterate on the web and mobile app experiences, so make sure you have the latest version installed. Payout, we do appreciate your patience throughout the transition to new payment provider as we work to restore full international payout capabilities, not just America, making good progress here and will share more details as it becomes available. Uh, push notifications, more priorities or more personalization settings coming soon. Can't wait for that. And they say waitlist for several waitlist drops for collectibles. There have been successes, but we continue to iterate and improve based on bug reporting your feedback. So keep it coming and thank you. Comics waitlist is here. First comic waitlist drop will be, drum roll, 
the end of Captain America, the first appearance of Steve Rogers as Nomad. Nomad Cap, that's kind of what he had in uh, Avengers Infinity War, where he had the beard and he was all schmexy AF. Anyway, um, that is going to be on Monday, July 3rd at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then, and then, and then, with successful comic waitlist drops next week, we will get Incredible Hulk number one back on the schedule ASAP. Hallelujah. That I'm oh, I'm ready. We're going to need gems. We're, I, I really hope they have like MCP stuff out for this. I, I want one. Um, I cannot wait for that. That is absolute grail. Uh, everyone's going to make a lot of money on that. Localization. They actually use the word localization. You may have noticed a language selector, uh, selector in the settings of both the web and mobile apps. First languages supported are French, Spanish, and Japanese. The French. Uh, we are excited to continue to further refine the translations and expand language support ongoing. And in case you missed it, we have released a pair of articles that reaffirm our plans to support interoperability and utility for the OMI token. Now we have a team dedicated to these areas and look forward to sharing progress in the coming months. The old team was put in, re put in and Reese. They are still working on it, but they now have another dedicated blockchain and OMI team. <laughs> it, it do be happening, though. So a couple of things I want to go over here first is uh, the localization where they said we're excited to continue to further refine the tran translations and expand language support ongoing. Um, this is their second time in Asia in the last, I don't know, in, in the last three months. They were there for a while and then they took a little bit of time just running the business, doing whatever, went to a licensing expo in Las Vegas and now they're at the biggest licensing expo that Japan has to offer. Um, I'm very, very excited about where these are going. And you also, on top of that, um, after this, you had Ryan, um, or we'll, we'll continue on these and, and then we'll do uh, the dope Ryan, see what he has to say. But looking ahead, the enhancements to crafting mechanics for future crafting events. Ooh, we're going to have more than just burn. Ongoing work on MCP, including spending points. Let's go. And more sweepstakes and giveaways. Join our discard to enter our weekly sweeps. Killer collectibles for grabs. And then they mentioned fidgetals. Now we had out, we had a Uniqlo, Uniqlo, however you pronounce it, uh, that teased as David wasn't just at, like, they, they didn't have a booth at the con. He was at the headquarters. He was at the main, the main building where all the magic happens. And guess what? They have, between them and their fast retailing, uh, that's a parent company that holds them, they have over a thousand retail stores throughout the world. And what better way to go and get Vivi out there by saying like, hey, guess what we're doing? We're going to have accessories. You guys don't have to do anything. Just give us designs. We'll put it on all our stuff. We'll put it on, everyone's gonna put it on their Batman, their Superman, their Spider-Man. Uh, and again, this is just my theory here. This is not what actually going down. It could be, I don't know. But if they go, if David goes to them and say that, and hey, if you want to boost your sales of the physical products, Print some of the physical ones on shirts. Guarantee you they sell because people all over the world will want to match their physical with their digital. But again, that's just from Uniqlo. You have other ones like maybe we could get Lego. Maybe we could get Funko. You pr I don't know if you'd want both. You'd probably only want one or the other. But maybe you get something along the lines of that. Hey, here's your digital. Come get the physical or vice versa. They could be a QR code to, from the physical. QR code gets you the digital. I think that'd be fun as well. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Run it back. We're excited to be joining our friends at Marvel again this year at San Diego Comic-Con, July 20th through the 23rd. We have some fun stuff planned, including giveaways and more. See you there. Really curious to see what more is. Giveaways are cool, but what is more? Comment down below all your theories about what's going down at San Diego Comic-Con. That is in a couple weeks. I was pretty sure they were going. I told people to expect them to probably go. Um, but I did not plan for them to go, so I don't know, uh, I don't know if I'll be there. I probably won't be there, uh, but we'll, uh, because again, it is very short notice, but we'll see. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Um, anyway, the Dope Ryan has this to say. Oh, where is it? He goes on and he posts a couple of things. He says, time to get fidgy with it. I couldn't be more excited to finally meet the Vivi fam at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. And he highlights fidgetals. And then he highlights our friends at Marvel again this year at San Diego Comic-Con. All that in one tweet. So I think Fidgetals are coming at San Diego Comic-Con. I think it might be the Mighties. Uh, and the reason I say that is because at San Diego and New York Comic-Con, you had these large versions of the Marvel Mighties. So maybe that's why you have to protect the Mighties. Maybe there's not a game to it. Maybe it's just more of a physical thing. I, I don't know. 
but I'm really excited about it. I would like to think that it had something to do with the game, but Marvel's game that they were working on with Niantic, Niantic's just like, listen, Marvel, we have to lay off a quarter of our staff. Our main priority is Pokemon. We're, we're, we're going to put y'all on the back burner for a while. So I don't think there's any game coming, at least not from Niantic. Excuse me. There might be something um, something else that they're doing uh, with the physicals. I, I don't know what it could be, but I am pretty excited. And again, um, having the phys fidgetals be the Marvel Mighties is just my particular... Um, that, that's just my particular theory. Um, there's nothing, nothing more beyond that. But David, do, you did say fun stuff confirmed. And um, I... I don't know. It's, it's probably worth it to go just to spend some time with, you know, David, Dan, you know, the whole team. Probably worth it to go just to do that and then see the fam on top of that. And then who knows what else they might be doing. I wouldn't expect any uh, VV Gold and Silver logo giveaway stuff because they wanted to hand stuff out last year. And Marvel's like, hey, only Marvel stuff here. Uh, so that will be saved for DesignerCon, which is happening in December of this year. They will announce more utility for that soon. I, I don't know when. Uh, hopefully this quarter. They might want to save it till next quarter, though, so I'll I'll keep you posted. But speaking of Mighties, we have Peter Fawn saying, Just completed all the Marvel Mighty sets. How about you? I have a feeling these are going to be on fire soon. And then uh, Gwentron doesn't have... I think he has, like, one set of them left. He doesn't have doesn't have a ton yet. Uh, we have Smarty Pants saying, Oh, hey, also excited to see my vault value over 300k now. Can't wait for the bull run values. And <laughs> uh, he also said he put in about 7,100 in 4chan and almost 20 grand in Grumpy Cat. When they moon, he's going to definitely buy some more Omi. Can't wait for that. Uh, comment down below if you've seen your vault value rise over the last couple of days, because I, I definitely have as well. Really, this past week, it's been nothing but up. Uh, we do have somebody... <laughs> we do have a little bit of a difference. So remember how I said the Platinum Moment Woody is not a direct copy? Um... Well, it's not. You have... Oh, you can't see that. It's a little super. Basically, Andy is supposed to be written on the bottom right boot uh, for, for Woody. But he is written... Andy's on the bottom left boot for him in the Platinum moment. So it's just one of those things that kind of um, distinguishes him from one from the other. People are saying, oh, this is a mistake. I don't think so. I think, like, hey, here's the Woody from the movie. Here's a Platinum moment Woody with a couple of differences. Oh, hey, you have Andy on the other foot. I don't think it's a mistake. I'm, I'm positive it's not a mistake. There had to be a reason, and I think they just wanted to have, it, you know, make it a little more different. Because the pose was very, very similar, to, so in order to do that, I think it's something that is, uh, I think it was good that they did. Also, shout out to Jeremy Padua for being a uh, being a real G in this Pokemon deal that's going down. Um, it's, uh, he's, he's a baller. I, I love him. Anyway, guys, please comment, like, and subscribe. Comment's good for the YouTube algorithm. Everyone say bye-bye, Dashy. Bye-bye, ah, Dashy. My shoulders. I love you guys. Bye. Meow, meow.